Now let's move on to discuss the lungs, including the different lobes of the lung, the alveoli, and respiratory mechanics. Let's use this image to describe the anatomy of the lungs. The most superior portion of the lungs is known as the apex. The inferior is the base. The right lung contains a superior lobe, which is separated from the middle lobe by the horizontal fissure. It also contains an inferior lobe, which is separated by the oblique fissure. The left lung contains a superior lobe and an inferior lobe separated by an oblique fissure. In this medial view of the lungs, you can see the pulmonary artery as well as the pulmonary veins. The superior lobar bronchus and the inferior lobar bronchus. There is also a groove for the esophagus. On the medial or mediastinal surface of the lung is the hilum and grooves that mark the position of the great vessels and heart. There is also a groove for the association to the esophagus. The left lung has a cardiac impression for the heart, and the left lung has a concavity in its medial margin in the anterior view. The pulmonary bronchi. Inside the lung, the primary bronchus divides into the secondary superior bronchus and tertiary bronchi. The tertiary bronchi give rise to bronchioles. The primary bronchi inside the lungs are known as the intrapulmonary bronchi, and together, the primary bronchi and their branches are known as the bronchial tree. Inside the lungs, the primary bronchi divide into secondary or lobar bronchi, and then the secondary divide into tertiary or segmental bronchi. There are a total of 10 tertiary bronchi in the right lung and between 8 and 9 in the left lung. Each tertiary bronchi supplies oxygen to a specific region of the lung. The lungs themselves are divided into small units known as bronchopulmonary segments. These are named based on the associated tertiary bronchus. The bronchioles and the alveoli. This image depicts the respiratory bronchioles and the individual alveoli themselves covered in elastic fibers. A group of alveoli form an alveolar sac. In the bronchopulmonary segments of the lungs, the tertiary bronchi give rise to approximately 6,500 terminal bronchioles. The smooth muscle of the terminal bronchioles is modulated by the autonomic nervous system. Sympathetic activation leads to bronchodilation, and parasympathetic stimulation leads to bronchoconstriction. Each terminal bronchial delivers air to a single pulmonary lobule containing several respiratory bronchioles. The respiratory bronchioles, in turn, deliver air to the alveoli individually and to more than one through alveolar ducts. Several alveoli are connected through passageways to form alveolar sacs. Alveoli are the site of gas exchange. Gas exchange in the lungs occurs in the alveoli, and they're surrounded by capillaries, and the distance between the capillaries and the alveoli itself is very small. The diffusion of gases based on partial pressures occurs between the alveoli and the capillaries. In the lungs, oxygen partial pressure is greater in the alveoli than in the capillaries, and this causes oxygen to diffuse from the alveoli to the capillaries to be transported in the tissues. The carbon dioxide partial pressure is greater in blood than in the alveoli, and this causes carbon dioxide to diffuse from the blood to the lungs to be blown off during the next expiration. The role of surfactant in surface tension. Pulmonary surfactant is a phospholipid similar to those found in a lipid bilayer surrounding cells. It's made by pneumocytes in the lungs, and it has two components, a polar water-loving head and a non-polar water-fearing tail. The surfactant polar head adsorbs into the liquid water covering of the alveoli, and the nonpolar tail faces towards the air inside the alveoli. 
surfactant absorbed into the liquid layer on the alveoli decreases surface tension. This increases lung compliance and makes the lungs easier to inflate as well as preventing the lungs from collapsing at the end of expiration.